Hello, bonjour. My name is Colbertine, the host of the Colbertine Report, your monthly news with a French flavor. Welcome, nation. Happy to have you on the Colbertine Report. What's really worth talking about in the U.S. and the rest of the world this month? I promise you bodacious comments. Remember, if the Colbertine Report doesn't make you smarter, it will not make you stupider. Thank you, thank you, merci, merci. Please take a seat. I take two months off the air, and oh my, 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 the 2016 U.S. presidential race has taken a turn for the worse. I understand why John Stewart is having a blast. You like it, don't you, John? Now you regret living at such an exciting time for satirists. In your wildest nightmares, you would never have imagined there could be such a presidential circus with so many scary clowns. Has it become more and more evident that Donald Trump has a real shot at becoming the GOP nominee? I invited a guest today to shed some light on all this. Please welcome Donald's twin brother, Mickey. So, Mickey, you claim being Donald's twin brother. You bet I am. Can you prove it? I don't need to prove anything. Just look at me to believe. Well, you do have a point, so tell us your story. Colbertine, there is a great chance that Donald is the reincarnation of Cleopatra, Ivan the Terrible, Louis XIV, and Queen Victoria. While I grew myself past any desire for money and power, Donald the contraire has acted as if he can never get enough. It does make sense. Donald could have gotten the taste of opulent buildings from Cleopatra, the personality of Ivan the Terrible, the obsession of gold from Louis XIV, and the desire to increase his empire from Queen Victoria. And in the meantime, I got no ambition. Donald took it all. I am such a loser. Come on, Mickey, you are not a loser. Everybody loves you here, right? Let me cheer you up, Mickey, with our next guest, the Republican National Committee Communication Director. Welcome, GOP. So what do you think of all the Republican candidates? If I may, Colbertine, I think GOP is depressed and needs a drink. You're right, Mickey. GOP is dumbfounded and silent. Come on, GOP. A word? Don't be sad. Oh, well, I'm going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back. Oh, nice music. What is that? I wonder what this is for. Welcome back, everybody. I am so sorry, but, you know, J.O.P. had to leave. He was too sad, not able to give an interview. So maybe he'll come back later. Moving on, nation. In the rest of the world this month, what is going on in France with Le Pen and his daughter? Jean-Marie Le Pen is currently 87 years old. He created the National Front, and his life was devoted to making France great again. Uh, wait, wait, this reminds me of someone. Oh, yeah, this U.S. candidate. Anyway, no analogy here. Le Pen became infamous for his strong language and controversial, provocative statements, especially against immigrants. For instance, he claimed that the French national soccer team had contained too many non-white players. In the election campaign for president in 2007, he called candidate Sarkozy the foreigner. He also called concentration camps and gas chambers a detail of history. He was convicted of racism and inciting racial hatred several times. For his statements against Muslims, he was fined 10,000 euros two times for incitement to discrimination, hatred, and violence toward a group of people. Le Pen founded the extreme right National Front Party in 1972 and remained its president until 2011. Who succeeded him? The youngest of his three daughters, Marine Le Pen. Now it gets ugly. This year in May, she ordered her father's suspension from the party following anti-Semitic remarks. Le Pen countered with legal action and won in a ruling July 28, despite a majority of members supporting his eviction. Last episode, now the revengeful Le Pen calls for his daughter and granddaughter, also involved in politics, to stop using his name, Le Pen. 
Return France to the French is the simplistic motto the Le Pen family power has been built upon. Seems to me that returning France to France without Le Pen is happening. Hey, wait, wait, who is happy now? Sarkozy? President Holland? Of course, it makes sense. Moving on, nation. Le mot or the word. Trophy hunting. The vicious murder of the Zimbabwe lion Cecil is revealing how money can buy anything, right? $50,000 worth of dentist patients' billing spent by Walter Palmer to murder, decapitate, and skin one of Zimbabwe's protected lions. Palmer is only one face of many other arrogant narcissists posing with their trophies online. Donald Trump Jr., a bunch of idiots, Kendall Jones, Robert Borsak, Rebecca Francis, Jimmy Jones CEO Lioto, Sarah Palin, Melissa Bachman. The most repugnant on these pictures is their smiles. They argue that they respect nature, that some animals need to be killed due to overpopulation. Well, guess what? There are too many humans on the planet, so reality TV should create the Hunger Games and select only trophy hunters, so we start regulating the human population of 7.3 billion. And that was the word. What the fuck? It's over already? Yes, it is. I wish you a great time until next month. And remember, if the Colbert Report doesn't make you smarter, it will not make you stupider.